Hey everybody, Darren Voros here. Today I'm gonna to sit down with Colleen and Zeb Sakira, who are originally from Yellowknife, but now make their home in Edmonton, Alberta. And they're gonna walk us through the process on how to buy properties in the US as Canadians. A couple of years ago, Zeb and Colleen went down to Phoenix, Arizona for a three week vacation, and they came back with two more properties in their portfolio. So they're gonna walk us through how they were able to do that, and they're gonna talk about what they're doing with those properties now. Before we get into it though, if you haven't done so already, you can subscribe to my channel. You can also hit the notification bell, and please feel free to leave comments and questions below for me. And without further ado, let's get into it. Today I'm here with Zeb and Colleen who have been full-time real estate investors for over six years now. Their portfolio consists of properties in Cleveland, Ohio, in Phoenix, Arizona, and across Canada. I'm so excited that they're joining me to talk about how to buy properties in the US as Canadians. Zeb and Colleen, it's great to have you guys here. Before we get too far into it, why don't you give us a little bit of an introduction on who you are and what you do as real estate investors. Thanks, Darren, for the introduction. As you mentioned, we've been real estate investors since 2014. And that's when we first got into the short-term rental space. We um, bought a property, suited it, and kind of were hooked from there. And it's been nonstop investing since. We began our journey investing in the US um, in 2018, 19. Yeah. And that's when we first set foot there. And yeah, it's really been a journey since. So how did you guys choose the market that you wanted to invest in in the US? We like to travel a lot. Oh, let me say Colleen loves to travel. <laughs> so we're always looking at uh, the opportunities um, wherever we travel. And uh, uh, as we were kind of pondering on where to travel next, Colleen kind, kind of looked at uh, Phoenix, Arizona. And it was, when, it was winter time, right? Mm -hmm. It's during the winter time. And she looked at, you know, what, what are things that we can do with our kids and, you know, what's fun stuff to do over there. And then, lo and behold, because we're in real estate investing, it was like, oh, okay, so if we're going to be there, what's going on in the real estate market over there? So that's kind of what picked our interest first. And then we did schedule like a three weeks uh, vacation. So we went there, we had fun with the kids, and at the same time, we're looking at real estate. So the biggest thing was finding out where Canadians and the West Side go to vacation, where they go to chase the sun. And during that research, we found that Phoenix, Scottsdale, those areas were really well traveled. And you could tell when you see an airline going there a couple of times a week. And those are the trends that we were looking at to see that if there's a couple of flights by WestJet, Air Canada, and the prices are low enough that they're making enough profit to do a couple of trips, it's a good destination to be. So yeah, like Zev said, that combined with the love of travel and needing a place to go for ourselves, it sounded like a perfect real estate uh, new venture. So you decide that Phoenix is the market that you want to invest in, or at least do a little bit more due diligence on. What was the next step in the process? Did you go there or did you start looking at things remotely? So we found a flight that was open. We were able to book the four of us to go down there. And obviously if you're going to, to um, Arizona in two weeks in March, which we didn't know at that time, finding accommodations will be a nightmare. So our trip started with booking um, a place for the first four days. Right. And because we're adventurous, we're like, let's try one place four days and we'll sort of discover and learn different areas once we get on the ground. But we really got to see different areas in Arizona because of our impromptu trip. We got to see the areas of Phoenix. Uh, we got to stay in Tempe. We got to stay in Scottsdale. So it was a downtown. really intense three weeks. Yeah, we got to be downtown as well. So was it the property that you found first and then you decided that you liked that area or did you find an area you liked and then started looking at property? Which order did that happen in? I think for us, we, we looked at the numbers first. We were sort of like uh, making our research on which location uh, fits best for uh, Airbnb. And we sort of found that, you know, the location that's, uh, you know, closer to the airport, closer to downtown and, uh, uh, where there's a lot of activities, uh, festivals and stuff like that. So we sort of like concentrated on looking at those locations. We went there with the goal of at least coming out with at least one property, but then we ended up with two because it was just, there was a lot of things happening and uh, the cash flow was pretty good in both locations. And we just ended up just, you know, pulling the trigger and getting two instead of one. So the first one, our realtor kind of took the lead, right? Yeah. We thought it would be best to work with a local expert who knows how to balance because in Arizona, there's the summer months, which are not as highly trafficked. 
-hmm. And then there's the winter when all of us look to go there. So we thought that a local expert will be the best person to work with who will be able to give us that balance. So our first property was in the South Mountain area. It's got the baseball places around. It's got a good summer market. It's, you know, it was going to give us that summer um, extra income we needed. Considering we're buying towards the end of March, March yeah. we needed to be able to know that we could start creating a reserve fund for that and get income then. So we got that first property. Everything worked out. The numbers were great. Everything else looked great. And uh, as we were kind of wrapping up our trip, we started doing more research on the ground and connected with another realtor. And he's like, oh, you guys bought that area. Well, you know what? Scottsdale is actually where you need to be. Yeah. Then that's when we're like, well, oh, we kind of want to just one pop it. He's like, no, you cannot leave without seeing it. So we went down to Scottsdale. We saw the place and we're like, okay, we got to do both. Yeah. So yeah, that's kind of how we got both properties. And we were able to see the market research on both sides. So uh, to assess the strengths of one area versus the other. Scottsdale didn't do as well as South Mountain in the summer. But Scottsdale, like on a longer scale, yeah. does a lot better than the South Mountain area. So what kind of properties were you guys looking at? Did you look at single family dwellings, multi-unit, condos? Uh, did you look at all of it? And what ultimately did you end up buying when you went down? When we started, we wanted something that was turnkey that we didn't have to, you know, worry about if anything happens. So we started with condos. Never been to Phoenix, didn't yeah. know anything about, you know, the security yeah. issues <laughs> and all of that. So we thought we'd go the risk-free way mm -hmm. uh, where we're able to test the market, mm -hmm. make sure, because we had seen properties that were freestanding. Mm -hmm. And at that time, we weren't sure about it. So we mm -hmm. started off with a condo that we knew that it was a complex, it was mm -hmm. protected, it was still gonna work with the Airbnb formula, but mm -hmm. that, that was our first strategy with the, the, both the properties. So were these pre-existing condos or were they pre-construction? Did you buy from an owner? Were these buildings a couple years old or were they brand new? Yeah. It was opportunities. They yeah. were not brand new. Brand new condos would cost a lot more, yeah. which would then impact our cash That's flow. Right. So it was our test market and we wanted to take away that was more calculated. Mm -hmm. So we looked at the existing condos that we were just taking over. So you bought two properties in a relatively short amount of time. How did you finance these or did you finance these properties? And how did you do that as Canadians in the US? So uh, we did finance the properties and uh, part of, our, of, our, of the reason why we, we, we went to Phoenix for three weeks was to, to, to network with a lot of people and get to know um, how we can finance properties as uh, internationals. So we managed to get a company that could finance both properties and that was great for us. Were you able to get standard mortgage rates in terms of similar to what a US citizen would get or did you have different rates because you were foreign citizens? It wasn't standard as you know citizens of the United States. It was 30% um, down and the interest rate as well was a bit high. I think it was 6%. 7% um, and the citizens, I think they get 2% or something like that. Mm -hmm. So it was more or less, you know, um, the mortgage companies making sure that, you know, we had enough skin in the game just to make sure that if we default, at least they have something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that was for both of them. So it yeah. was a high down payment with mm -hmm. higher interest. Sure. Yeah. You find these two properties, you figure out how to finance them. What was the next step in the process? Did you buy these properties personally or did you buy them inside of a corporation? The, the first thing you need to decide is uh, if you want to do this as a business, if you want to buy properties in the United States as a business or whatever country you decide you want to do it in. And from, from that angle, then you can approach a professional, an accountant who's uh, knowledgeable with the country or which, wherever you're trying to go. And then they can tell you what you have to do in terms of setting up your, um, you know, your business, right? So once you have done that, then... For us, we wanted to make this into a business. So we had to um, open up an LLC um, that would you know, hold the companies and um, you know, when we purchase them. And then from there, of course, you know, once you find a property that you, you want, then you have to put in an offer and then you have to do almost everything that you do when you're in Canada, like make sure that you, know, you have the property inspection done and everything is good. And then this has to go through a title company so a title company then takes the, uh, the offer and then it does its due diligence at the back in terms of like, you know, if it's a condo, they look at, um, you know, the condo corporation, the documents, they get the documents for us. They do all that stuff, the background stuff. And uh, we actually prefer title companies yeah. over lawyers 
because yeah. the title company actually has more to offer. You'll also yeah. get the title insurance. Yeah. So that's our preferred model. It costs a bit more, mm -hmm. but for us as Canadians, it was worth mm -hmm. it for the peace of mind. So do you get to choose your own title company as the buyers or what is the process there? So the way we'll start is that the seller gets in touch with the title company they want to work with. So their title company will then uh, communicate with our uh, realtor and that's who we work with. So the seller normally gets to select who the title company is. I'm guessing after you submit your documents to the title company, it's similar to our process here. The title company is looking at if there's any secondary liens on the property or looking at anything that might be out of the ordinary. Are you still in the conditional period at this point? So basically when you put in an offer, there's two weeks or 10 days, whatever you guys decide that you want to as condition, right? You want to do the inspection and all that stuff. So as soon as you do your inspection, you get, you know, financing uh, in place. But most of the time they want you, if, you know, they want you to have um, uh, a mortgage, what is it called? A pre-approval. A pre, -approval. A pre -qualification, yes. right? So, so that they know that you're pretty much serious that, you know, you're not playing around with, uh, with the seller. And so, that's actually the other difference in the yeah. U.S., mm -hmm. that we were not able to put a, uh, an offer on a property without attaching a pre-approval to it. So we initially left Canada with a pre-approval from a Canadian bank. Yeah. And when we got to the States, we found out that our pre-approval was invalid as we were going through the offer process yeah. because they said that the bank wasn't allowing us to purchase a property specifically in Arizona. We could do it in Nevada, in Atlanta, and another state, but not in Arizona. So that's kind of how we had to put, hold the search back and look for somebody in the U.S. who was able to actually offer us financing. And only then was our realtor able to put an offer. Was there a restriction on Arizona because the Canadian bank didn't have operations there or what was the issue? They were saying that they don't have um, someone who, who works with them in that area. And we didn't have, for us, we didn't have the time to actually sit on it and try to research more into that. So we really like we're running out of time. So we had to find other means and that's when we looked at other viable options. Because depending who you speak to, when we yeah. came back to Canada, they were adamant that yeah something had gone wrong. wrong. They could buy properties in Arizona. So it all depends who you mm -hmm. speak to and how much time you have. We had a goal in mind that we sort of set out to make it happen in that two weeks. And we were connected to a mortgage broker, a U.S. broker who was able to get us into um, financing our properties. So you mentioned you bought these existing properties. Were these properties tenanted or were they owner occupied? What was the timeline like from the time you made the offer to the time that you actually took possession? Yes. They uh, both had the owners living there. They had the there. owners living in them. So the, the, when, when we put in an offer, a closing day was basically agreed on. So um, after the whole process, that didn't change. So I think the first one we were closing, I think, uh, 20 days after, after from the offer. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it didn't change. There was not a lot of things that like, because sometimes the... The mortgage company can take a lot of a lot of time to process because they're trying to get all this information from you and stuff like that. But uh, that one, those ones went actually smoothly, so we didn't have uh, have to change our closing days. Did you guys immediately decide you wanted to use these as Airbnb rentals, or did you contemplate using them as just standard rentals before making the decision to switch to Airbnb? So the first thing that we always do with the, with the properties that we purchase is we run the numbers with the traditional way of renting out properties. Uh, which is long-term tenants. And then after that, then we look at the short-term rental space. So us being in, in um, Phoenix for three weeks made us realize that like it's a hot market for short-term rentals. So we basically told ourselves and after running the numbers that we were going to start with short-term rentals. And then uh, if anything happens, then we can always revert back to um, uh, long-term rentals. Actually talking about that, one of our properties right now we rented it out to another investor as a full-time rental because they are trying to get into the market of doing Airbnb and stuff like that. So we basically reverted to renting it out as a, as a full-time tenant and uh, it's still cash flowing. So, so regardless of Airbnb or a long-term rental, you would have had to figure out management, I'm guessing, because you don't live in Arizona. So what did you decide to do in terms of management of this property? So for us, the biggest thing is that business and life are, business and life are team sports, right? Mm -hmm. So the best way to grow wealth and knowledge is to have a great team of experts. 
So what we did getting on the ground was connecting with our realtor who connected us with other service providers in the area. We were able to find people who would uh, manage our short-term rentals and some who would actually do the cleaning. So we did start off by managing it ourselves and a company approached us and they offered to take on the property management for us. We let them run it for a couple of months and we realized that because it's the hospitality industry and having worked in the hospitality field myself for a few years, we were actually doing a better job at it. The returns were higher. We were better able to communicate with guests as they were checking in, checking out, having questions. Uh, so we took on the property management. We were able to connect with cleaners on the ground and build the system being virtual, including right now. We still have uh, Airbnbs running across Canada and the U.S., and all of these are managed by ourselves virtually. Colleen, Zeb, I know that we could dive into a whole other episode on the ins and outs of Airbnb, but we'll save that for another day. Thank you guys so much for walking us through the process on how to buy properties in the U.S. as Canadians. If you want to reach Zeb or Colleen through their various forms of social media, I'll leave those in the description down below. If you enjoyed today's episode on how to buy properties in the U.S. as a Canadian, go ahead and hit that like button. You can also subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, and please feel free to leave comments and questions below for me. You can also follow me on Facebook, Instagram, or check out my website at darrenvoros.com. Zeb, Colleen, thank you guys for taking some time out of your day to join us. I hope that our paths will cross very soon, and I wish you guys the best of success in your real estate investing journey. Awesome. All right. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks.